I see we have a few people on the Facebook Live. Um, good afternoon again. Thank you for joining me with another session on understanding student loan debt. My name is Makisha Wolf, your TCL Financial Aid Advisor, and we will begin. Today we're going to discuss um, the outline of today is types of student loans, interest rates, minimizing loan burden, understanding repayment, and loan servicers. So what is a student loan? A student loan is intended to be used for education, living expenses. Student loans have high interest rates of 5 to 10%. They are only discharged in the event of death or total disability, not bankruptcy. Unlike scholarships, they will always need to be repaid. Well, what are the two types of student loans? There are federal direct loans and private loans. Federal direct loans have lower interest rates, better repayment plans, such as income-driven plans, forgiveness plans, forbearance or deferment, as well. Private loans should be used after exhausting all federal loans because private loans require co-signers. They have no fixed interest rate. So as the market goes up, the interest rate will go up. Also, if you do not pay back the loan, they will garnish your wages. They may garnish your wages. According to Forbes magazine, Student loan debt is the second highest consumer loan debt next to mortgage debt. Almost 44.2 million people owe $1.52 trillion in student loan debt. That is a lot of people owing a lot of money. So let's talk about interest rates. Interest rates on studentaid.gov, it explains that an interest rate, interest is paid to a lender as a cost of borrowing money. Interest is calculated as a percentage of the unpaid principal amount. Depending on whether your loans are subsidized or unsubsidized, you may or may not be responsible for paying interest that occur during all periods. It also states that if you do not pay the unsubsidized loan interest while in school, it may be capitalized and added to your principal balance. Unlike unsubsidized, subsidized loans does not accrue interest while in school. That's why you should always ask for your subsidized loan first. Next is minimizing loan burden. Many students sometimes feel pressure to go to a private institution when many public institutions provide many of the same benefits with the lower cost of attendance. For example, I studied at a four-year year institution right after high school because I was top five of my graduating class and everyone one was expecting me to go to a four-year university. However, I was paying more money out of pocket and using federal loans to cover my expenses. I was only a freshman and thought that that was ridiculous. <laughs> so I transferred to a two-year university, two-year college, TCL, and did not have to pay any of those loans or did not have to pay loans for the two-year period that I was here. I was getting the same benefits, if not more, from a two-year institution. So that's why it's important to check out all scholarships and grants at your institution because you may not even have to take out a loan or you may not have to take out much of your loan. Another important fact is work-study or part-time jobs. Getting, getting into work study or having a part-time job, you can, ex, you can gain experience in your future field and it can help you pay for school or your living expenses. You can also minimize your living expenses, like living with a roommate or staying at home with your parents. You can cook more of your meals instead of eating out. And it's also important to borrow loans responsibly. Borrow what you need because you will have to pay back the loan with interest. Also, estimate your earnings after graduation. Get with a career counselor to see the starting, 
salaries of your future career, add up your estimated total net income and any other sources of income you expect to have. So how to complete a federal student loan. You must complete a FAFSA every year to be considered or eligible for a student loan. Before you can receive a direct loan, you have to sign a loan agreement called an MPN, a master promissory note. If you are borrowing for the first time, you will also need to complete an entrance counseling. Both requirements can be completed on studentaid.gov. Go to studentaid.gov slash login to access your completed information. Always check with your school's financial aid office to find out how they expect you to complete them. Understanding repayment. Once you have a realistic idea of, the, of your potential income after you graduate and the amount you need to borrow to meet your education experience, you'll want to determine your estimated monthly loan payment amount and the amount you'll pay in total for your loan. To get an idea of what your monthly student loan payment will be under available repayment plans, please use the repayment estimator at studentaid.gov slash repayment slash estimator dash estimator. Your loan servicer will contact you six, six months after dropping below half time or after you graduate. To learn more about repaying, go to studentaid.gov slash repay. Always stay in touch with your loan servicer. Staying in touch with your loan servicer and notifying them when you change your address or telephone number or when you change your name, such as going from maiden to married to a married last name or having any change in status as you receive, because some students receive a deferment, but they're no longer eligible uh, based on their income requirements. I know this was really short, but as always, if you have any questions about understanding your um, loan debt or about any of the sessions that we had this week for financial aid, please contact us at financialaid at tcl.edu. You may call us always at 843-470-5961 or book an appointment on our QList website. I will list the, the information below about all of the links that I've discussed in the live so that way you all can have that. And if you have any other financial questions um, not pertaining to any of the sessions, you can always email us, call us, or book an appointment. Thank you.